the sinful mind is hostile to god it does not submit to god's law nor can it do so romans chapter 8 verse 7 let us pray gracious lord we thank you for bringing us together during this lenten season to reflect on the letter of saint paul to the romans Lord, enable us to realize the true meaning of his writings and equip us to be thy true servants. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Paul was writing to the congregation in Rome. And he said, had his own experience of how he was struggling to hate sin in roman chapter 714 he observed that verse 714 let me read 15 i do not understand what i do for what i want to do i do not do but what i hate i do as a human being saint paul shares his own experience when he was writing to the congregation in rome really it is a struggle for each one of us to hate things that are against god paul was preparing the roman church to welcome him when he reaches that church to preach and interpret the word of god before he goes there through his letter he is preparing them stating that he too was subject to certain sinful activities after that when he begins the chapter 8 in verse 7 he says the sinful mind is hostile to god god does not like the sinful mind those who crucified our lord jesus were sinners and that's why when lord jesus spoke the first verse on the cross he focused on the need of forgiveness lord forgive them that they know not their sin that they know not their sin he considered that their activities were sinful therefore they were in need of forgiveness but they were not aware what they were doing was sin they were supporting leaders and they were executing the command of the chief priest but lord wanted to teach them what you are doing is sin this was an awareness teaching to the people what you are doing now is sin and therefore you are in need of forgiveness when paul wanted to teach them he says the sinful mind is hostile to god he was hostile to god and verse let me read verse 4 and 
of chapter 8 chapter 8 let me read 5 those who live according to the sinful nature have their mind set on what that nature desires but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their mind set on what the spirit desires paul always used to mention the fruits of the spirit and that's why when he wrote to the corinthians corinthian second corinthian chapter 3 verse 17 verse 17 second corinthians 3 17 now the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom now he tells those people who are members in roman church uh, sorry in in corinth in corinth now the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom by saying so he wanted to tell them that they were under constant fear of sinfulness and they were under bondage they were slaves to sin he warned them to realize the need of freedom freedom from sinful activities Spirit is that to equip them to receive freedom from sin. Freedom from sin. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Roman 8 verse 4, 8 verse 4, In order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. He differentiates between sinful activities and the fruits of the spirit. This is one of the significant teaches, teachings of St. Paul when he wanted to tell them the true meaning of the gospel. During the time of Ezekiel, God wanted to teach the people of Israel that they will be filled with the Spirit, they will have new heart, new mind. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26. Let me read from <clears throat> 25. Ezekiel 36, 25. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. New heart, a new spirit. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. See how much pain God wanted to take in order to convince them that they be delivered from sinful activities. New heart, new spirit, and you will remove the heart of stone and give them heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. We know when Jesus was concluding the parable of rich and Lazarus, when he was teaching this gospel of the rich and 
Lazarus, Abraham tells, for them, Moses and prophets are enough. Even if, if someone raises and goes to them, it won't be of much useful unless they read and reflect the law of Moses and books of prophets, prophetical books. Then he concludes that the law will equip them, prophetical books will teach them in order to qualify them to enter into the kingdom of God. Through Ezekiel, God says that and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. The teachings of the Old Testament are good enough to qualify us in order to be aware of the need of the teachings as well as that will qualify us to enter into the kingdom of God. New heart that will be a flesh, new spirit, and there will be no impurities. They will keep God's laws. Paul again and again says that those who are sinners are hostile to God, enemies to God. They cannot perform the activities of God who created us, who made us to live in this universe joyfully and happily, toiling on the earth, producing agricultural products, and live without any discrimination. And this was not followed by the first community, the early communities, and therefore at the time of Noah, there was flood, and there was again new community. Even after having seen such new generation, they were up against the purpose of God, and God sent many prophets. And finally, there was John the Baptist, and Jesus came to qualify us, to teach us the need of repentance. And he was teaching to learn the truth of the kingdom of God. And that is nothing but good news, good news of gaining a lot of, <coughs> gaining a lot of knowledge on new world order, where there will be joy, holiness, no discrimination, no impurity, but God will lead the whole universe, which will be recognized or welcomed by every human being. But this Jewish community were against our God's ministry. John chapter 9, verse 22, I want to refer that. The parents of the blind who was healed by our Lord, they say, John chapter 9, verse 22, his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. 
they were not telling the truth they were under constant fear they were not allowed to speak the truth or the messiah but paul having accepted lord jesus on his way to damascus did not bother about the threat from jewish communities earlier he was part of the community threatening young christians arresting them punishing them and persecuting them we know that how he was subscribing to the um, activities of jewish fanatics acts of apostle chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 and Saul was that giving approval to his death when Stephen was stoned to death on that day a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria fanatics mind were filled with sinful activities paul became god's servant on 25th of january every year christian community celebrate feast of the conversion of paul a sinful man had become a saintly person and therefore he was well aware of the need of forgiveness and he was able to teach the people the sinful activities how sin makes them slaves and works against the will of god churches placed all over the world to teach this truth and to make all holy in order to qualify us to be part of the kingdom of god let us pray gracious lord help us to realize the need of forgiveness lord grant us the knowledge of analyzing our activities make us to be aware of the sinful activities in order to be governed by the holy spirit and cleansed by thee in jesus name we pray amen